BMRforum.com and BMRodds.com. What is going on, boys? What is going on? Welcome back to the lobby, episode number 41. The man right next to me must have not felt like doing his hair any type of way because it's all messed up. Mr. Sam's in charge. What's up, Bobby? Uh, excited to start my eating uh, next couple days. Excited to uh, make some mac and cheese tomorrow and then uh, eat all the leftovers on Friday, make a sandwich out of it. So uh, big, uh, big couple days of food ahead of us. Yes, yes. Are you going to be cooking? Are you going to be cooking, Sam? What are you doing? Yeah, personally, I am in charge of the macaroni and cheese. Uh, that's why I just shouted okay. it out. So I'll be making that this year. Uh, I made it the last couple of years, and uh, that's what I'm in charge of. Sam's in charge okay. of mac and cheese. Well, it must be pretty good mac and cheese if you've been in charge of it every year. Yeah, uh, I'm doing a crock pot mac and cheese this year. Normally I do. Last year I did it, you know, made your own cheese sauce with the roux, and then you bake it and stuff. Oh, wow. Uh, this year I'm doing the uh, crock pot four cheese mac and cheese. Oh, that good. A lot better than a lot better than that craft mac and cheese, that's for sure. Yeah, I haven't had craft in a bunch of years. Uh, we've grown up from there. <laughs> <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Mr. Donnie right side. What's up, Donnie? Hey, man, I can't wait for Thanksgiving. By far the best day of the year. You get football games, you get food, you get family, you get fun, you get gambling. It all rolls into one. And just Sammy saying he's got the mac and cheese ready to roll. I, I Look. Fast forward to tomorrow when that turkey hits the table and all the stuffing and the appetizers around it. I can't wait for it here. My favorite day of the year, not even close. Well, you know, Donnie, you mentioned a lot of good stuff, but you forgot yeah. about one key thing. Sam, I'm sure you can fill us in. The drinking. Mm. Isn't, that, isn't that one of the biggest uh, things? Cigars, that drinking? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be happening. Edible. I'm going to my parents' house, and uh, my dad just built his own bar, and there'll be uh, there'll be shots ahead. Uh -huh. He built his own bar? Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, he just he retired six months ago, so uh, you know yeah, he yeah. just bought a new house, got a new townhouse, built it up, so had to finish the basement, did some uh, building the bar. I didn't do it. Nice. What's on the uh, what's on the drinks menu? I think I want to start off, you know, with the nine thirty games. I want to start off light. Tequila sunrises. You know, they don't mm. call it tequila sunrise for nothing. You can't have it in the afternoon, Donnie. You got to have it in the morning. Start off with that, then transition to the afternoon games. You ever have a kamikaze shots there, Sam? Yeah, I've had some kamikazes. Delicious. I'll probably start off with some mimosas. Mm. You know, I'm thinking some Bloody Mary still. Nah, I'm not a Bloody Mary guy. Not a Bloody Mimosa Mary radish. guy? What's, what's your go-to drink, Donnie? Uh, whiskey. I like Crown Royal. is probably my favorite at this point right now. Mm -hmm. Actually, I like a little – with some ice in there, I do splash some water in there. Crown yep. Royal Vanilla is my drink of choice right now. I've always been a vodka guy, whiskey guy. I'm not a, really a beer guy at all, so bring on the vodkas and all the hard stuff. But whiskey for me, as I get older, seems to hit the best. You know, I'm the same way. I never got into beer. All my friends make no. fun of me. Yep, you me know, Fishhead and others, they're like, oh, you don't drink beer? I'm like, IPAs. No, I, I, like to, I don't like the taste of it. <laughs> Whiskey. Me too. But uh, let's jump right out into the hardwood. Sammy, let's start with you. What do you got for us today? Yeah, in reference to the NBA, I will say in reference to the uh, in-season tournament, I feel like the more games that I'm watching, the more I'm into it. I still right. can't get on board with the courts, though. These vibrant, <laughs> super bright courts, it's its just so hard to follow the action sometimes. But, uh, you know, we're only three games in, but two teams have already advanced, the Pacers and the Lakers, and five teams are eliminated. The Knicks are sitting there at one and one, you know, four-game round robin, then on to the quarterfinals. So it's pretty exciting, actually, as it goes along. So, uh, you know, I've been – I've been uh, Liking it more and more as I go along. But tonight, I like the Suns minus two and a half over Golden State, and I like the Kings over New Orleans. All right. Good luck with those. And it's going to be very exciting, especially when those finals are out here in Vegas. So definitely yep. looking forward to that. Donnie, what do you got on the hardwood for us this evening? Uh, Milwaukee Bucks, Boston Celtics tonight. Jason Tatum a little bit under the weather. Not sure if he is going to play. That line dipped as low as four and a half. But I'll take the five with the Milwaukee Bucks, factoring on maybe we don't get the best effort out of Jason Tatum tonight. Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo should be good to go for the Milwaukee Bucks. Also, I'll take a look at the Minnesota Timberwolves. No Joel Embiid after a back-to-back -back here. Minnesota, one of the better teams now in the NBA, particularly in the West. I'll lay the six and a half against the Philadelphia 76ers. Also, Dallas Mavericks and the Los Angeles Lakers. LeBron James is playing a lot of minutes as of late. That's a back-to-back -back for them. I'm going to take the Dallas Mavericks on the road as three-point favorites to knock off the Lakers tonight. That's where I'm going. All right. Good luck with those, Donnie. And a quick shout-out from the one and only Jeannie. Glad to have you back on the forum, Jeannie. Hopefully you had a wonderful, wonderful vacation. But her shout-out this week goes to Chucky the Goat Two, Chucky the mm. Goat Two. You know, big thank you to Chucky for all his wonderful sports picks and wonderful sports write-ups. 
you know, happy to have you here, Chucky the Goat, number two. You know, I missed the original Chucky the Goat. I know it's this person, but uh, Chucky, if you want those <laughs> usernames combined, feel free and reach out to me and we can go ahead and we can take care of that for you. But, um, Sammy, how was last week in the pros for you? NFL, how was your last week? How did the weekend look? Yeah, know? NFL was uh, pretty rough in the contest. I went two and five. I did win my seven and five confidence, so I got okay. 12 points. But I uh, still went two and five. So overall, not a great week for me spread wise. But um, the, the difference between betting on the contest and betting in real life is the over under. And uh, the under train is on board, especially with prime time. It's like yeah, 15 it and one the last 16 games. You know, the first over that hit was Thursday night football, Sunday night football, Monday night football, both hit unders. So if you're just blindly taking bl uh, national TV unders, you are winning some money. So looking ahead, I might just do that tomorrow for Thanksgiving. Um, I do like the Cowboys to uh, to beat up on Washington. They have been playing real sure. well, especially at home. Of course you like the Cowboys. Of course Sam. I do. Of course I like the Cowboys. And I think for the late game, I like Seattle plus seven and a half home to San Fran. Okay. And uh, for that first game, I think I'm just going to take that under, just that national TV under. Don't really know what's going on with it, but you got to follow the trend, make some money, you know, let's go. Yeah. You know, I'll agree with you with Dallas tomorrow. I do like Dallas. In the early game, though, I like Detroit at home, and I'm going to agree with you there with Seattle at home getting the seven and a half. Donnie, uh, how was your last week, and what do you got for us uh, this coming week? It, it was tomorrow. a mixed bag. Yeah, mixed bag last week. Four and three overall in the contest, which is fine. I'm hanging in there still in the top five, which is exactly where I wanted to be. The survivor pick went up in flames with the Washington Commanders. Was upset about that. And the interesting part about that is it was down to the Detroit Lions and the Washington Commanders. I said to myself, it was one of those games, I can't see Washington losing, so let me burn the Commanders. I'll never have an opportunity to probably bet them again the rest of the way. And I wanted to sort of save Detroit. Well, during that fourth quarter, both teams down double digits late. I said, all right, I was going to lose either one. It's not that bad. Both teams started to come back. Detroit finished their comeback. Washington got the football back with a chance to win, but came up with another interception, which turned into a pick six. So that went up in flames. But having said that, I had my most profitable Sunday of the year. Hit an eight to one parlay and also hit a round robin where all four legs came in. It was sensational across the board, but still an empty taste in the stomach here. Why? I really wanted to keep going that Survivor Contest to see where I could get to, but I'm out on the sidelines here just watching from here on out. All right. Well, congratulations on your awesome Sunday, Donnie. You know, some of those days I even have in the casino, you know, some days you feel like everything right. you touch is a winner, and yep. those are some great, great days. Sammy, how was your college football last week? What do you have? Yeah, college football, I'm still right in the middle of the road. Nothing really spectacular, four and three. Okay. Um, but we are going to the last week of the college football. So, uh, yes, you know, the yes standings are. are pretty important. So right now, Hawk Wind is in first place with a nine point lead. So nine point lead going into the last week. So he just needs a couple wins to secure the bag there. Red, right, red, second, nine points behind. Hoss Wilbur in third at 204. Go Bucks at 203 and Lex Icon at 202. So we might have a battle for second place because two through five is all within three points of each other. So we got a battle for top five and a nine point lead for Hawk win in first place. There we go. But in reference to college, you know, outside the contest, of course, you got the game of the week, Ohio State versus Michigan. Right. Um, you know, in reference to that game, you have the two top three in defenses. Both teams are allowing less than 10 points. Um, for the most part, Michigan or I'm sorry, Ohio State has owned this uh, rivalry. They've won. You know, nine out of the last 10 games, Michigan won the last time in 2021 for the first time in 10 years. Um, overall, I'm going to be taking Ohio State plus three and a half points in that game. So uh, super excited. Obviously, one team will probably make the playoffs when they win. One team will potentially not make the playoffs, maybe make the playoffs. It's super tough this year. When it went to eight teams next year, it'll be a lot easier. But finding a final four, especially if Washington takes care of business, Florida takes Florida State takes care of business, Alabama takes care of business, who's going to be that fourth team in? So really excited storylines going into the final weekend. Yeah. All right. Good luck with that, Sammy. And a quick shout out to our top five from last week in college contest. As Sammy did mention, this is the last and final week to get uh, – Get the picks in for the contest, guys. So make sure you go ahead and do that. But our top five last week, win and win at number one. Fried cheese at number two. Tenko in at number three. Frank Lee in at number four. And the banker in at number five. Nani, uh, what, was, uh, what do you got this weekend for us in college? 
Yeah, college football is going to be interesting. As Sam has said, I mean, the, the game, as they call it, noon kickoff on Saturday, which I love, 30-degree temperatures in Ann Arbor. It should be a great one. For my money here, Michigan is the better football team, but I do think Ohio State matches up very well. This is two really good defenses going toe-to-toe, -to -toe and two quarterbacks, sometimes a little bit questionable, able to step up. So maybe an under 45-and-a-half look in this game. One game that's going to be really interesting, it's Texas A&M and it's LSU. I believe LSU is up to a double-digit favorite, but this is the last game of the season for LSU regular season, which means Jaden Daniels is actually the favorite in the clubhouse right now for the Heisman Trophy. They're going to do whatever they can to make sure he has as many yards as possible, as many touchdowns in the air, and as many touchdowns on the ground as they can, because Bo Nix and Michael Penix right behind him, they have big games this weekend. The Apple Cup, Washington State versus Washington. Washington's a heavy favorite, but also the Civil War, Oregon versus Oregon State, which Bo Nix will play in. Then again, we're going to have the Pac-12 championship game next week. If both of those teams have victories there, Washington comes in unbeaten. Oregon comes in with one loss. If Bo Nix and or Michael Penix has a big game in that and sends their team into the college football playoff, one of those guys is going to end up winning the Heisman Trophy here. But if both of those guys get either knocked off or have down leaks, then it's probably going to go back to Jaden Daniels. Also, keep a look there. Kentucky and Louisville this weekend. An in-state rivalry, about a seven-and-a-half point favor for Louisville. Keep in mind, Louisville is already locked into the ACC championship game next week against Florida State. Kentucky just playing for pride. Maybe they can keep it inside the number, but a pretty good weekend of college football when it actually starts tomorrow in the Egg Bowl, Ole Miss versus Mississippi State, then Friday, then Saturday, great football Sunday. What a great weekend, gentlemen. We got set up. Only so, and it sounds like a lot of great storylines coming yeah. out of the college football circuit, so it's going to be an awesome, awesome weekend yep. there. Quick recap, our top five in NFL last week in our, in our NFL contest. To the nines in at number one, RR Silver in at number two, number three, Live Lucky 13, number four, Red Right Red, and number five, a Subaru 80. Sammy, how's the full season looking in, in uh, NFL? Really yeah, top five starting to have a little bit of separation as well between yes. first and second. You know, uh, Daniel SP at 216 and Red Right Red at 208. So Red Right Red is sticking at second place in both college and in the NFL. So shout out to him. I hope he's uh, nice. listening. And then uh, tied for third place, you got Head Sturks and Mr. Donnie Wrightside at 201. And then All right. uh, Arun SH at 199. So, uh, you know, 17 points separating one through five, uh, seven points separating uh, two and three, eight points separating one and two. So, you know, still a lot of weeks to go. So still a lot of movement yeah. for uh, for a lot of guys there. It's definitely in a still very, a very, very close battle up there at the top. Uh, Donnie, what do you got for us? What's your seven going into this weekend in NFL? Yeah, let's take a look. I actually didn't pick any games from Thursday. Detroit, Dallas, San Francisco, all the favorites there. I do think the favorites win a little bit heavy. Right. If I had to pick one on Christmas, or excuse me, on Thanksgiving Day, I probably lean more towards San Francisco, a banged up squad there for the Seattle. But it's hard on Thursday. Short work weeks to get ready. You know, quick turnarounds here, especially for road teams like the San Francisco 49ers. But having said that, I think my best bet of the day tomorrow is Tony Pollard. Anytime touchdown at minus 140 for the Dallas Cowboys. Let's look for back-to-back -back weeks he gets in the pay dirt. But Sundays, after afternoon. I'm going to go with the Jacksonville Jaguars laying the one and a half at Houston. This is a tricky spot because Houston is really good. But if I'm just being honest, I thought Jacksonville would win the division. They have to win this game to take the pressure off themselves and separate themselves from the Houston Texans. So more of a pick that says this is season long. And I do think Jacksonville will be a player in this game. I'll take the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers, who were so disappointing on offense last week against Cleveland. This is going to be another hard fart game, but also Joe Burrow, not a quarterback for Cincinnati. It's going to be with a backup. So back-to-back -back weeks here. Jake Browning, by the way, is the quarterback for the Bengals. Not a great quarterback. Also, T. Higgins looking to miss this game. I think the Steelers getting a new offensive coordinator changed some things up. If they can get the 17 points, that should be enough to beat this Cincinnati Bengals team with a backup quarterback. The Atlanta Falcons on the road going up, excuse me, at home taking on New Orleans right now. This is an interesting one because we were led to believe that the New Orleans Saints quarterback, Derek Carr, was not going to play this weekend due to concussion and other injuries. He did practice in full today. He's just waiting to get cleared by the doctors for his concussion protocol, so that pick might change. But right now, I'm thinking Atlanta. Another game, Indianapolis Colts minus 2.5 over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Colts rested and ready at home waiting. Tampa Bay on the road got smoked last week by San Francisco. Now goes on the road. I think they lose outright there to Indianapolis. I'll lay the 2.5 points. Denver Broncos goes Cleveland Browns. Look, I like what the Broncos are doing, but I also like what the fact that the Browns are bringing to the table. However, I'm going Denver Broncos. I'll lay the two and a half points. The Broncos are at home on a winning streak, and if they win this game, above 500.
Congratulations, Sean Payton, for keeping that team together through all that turmoil. Philadelphia Eagles at home against the Buffalo Bills. This is a tough one, too. I'm going to take the Bills here. Psych, psych, right? Psych. I'm going to take the Philadelphia Eagles minus three and a half in this game to beat the Buffalo Bills at home and keep that momentum riding. And then Monday Night Football, I'll take the Chicago Bears. Give me the three and a half points against the Minnesota Vikings. That's where I'm leaning this week in my seven for our pool. Right. Good luck with those, Donnie. And um, guys, don't forget, there's still plenty of opportunity yeah. to join our streak of fortune. And it runs Thursday to Sunday. So definitely a shot uh, Thursday to Monday, excuse me. So definitely a shot to get into that. Make sure you like us on Twitter at BMR Reviews. Look for that post with the streak of fortune. Make sure you join and make sure you become a baller to be eligible for prizes. Sammy, what do you got for us in your seven? What do you, what do you like this weekend? Yeah, Donnie hit the nail with uh, a lot of my picks, so um, not to reiterate, but I have Indianapolis at home. I got Denver at home. Um, I do like Atlanta as well. The other matchup I do like is Arizona at home over the Rams, and um, I like the Chargers plus three and a half against uh, Baltimore. All right, thank you, Sammy. Good luck with those. And last but certainly not least, guys, our, our, our poker tournament uh, series events has come to an end. So, guys, be on the lookout uh, for a, a, a private message from me with more information on when and where our final poker event finale is going to be. And uh, if you guys like some free baller coins, make sure you go on to Twitter at BMR. Uh, or, tw I would keep on to call Twitter. It is now <laughs> I X. Donnie, I need you to remind me each and every week. It is now I X. Still remind, I still Twitter. say it. Yeah. Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, you know where it is. <laughs> at BMR Reviews. Make sure you give us a follow on there. Make sure you like us and follow us on Instagram at BMR underscore review. And uh, Sammy, Donnie, anything else for us before we get out of here? Have a great I'm ready to go and eat. Yeah, I think we're going to eat. I think we're going to drink. Yes. I think we're going to relax. Yes. I think we're going to win some money. And also, Thanksgiving here, right? Good people at Bookmakers Review. Look, we do a lot of work here on the websites, have a lot of fun. Some of us being the face of the franchise where you see us on camera each and every week. But the people behind the scenes, thank you for all the hard work you do. And also, for all the people that come day to day and sign in and use their you know, efforts to, hey, here's the play I got. Here's what it is. We're only building a bigger community each and every day. So thanks to everybody at Bookmakers Review, whether you work for Bookmakers Review or you're a lucky person to be on that website and contribute each and every day. Thank you. That's where I'm at. Yes, thank you to each and every one of you who watched the podcast, each and every one, one of you who contribute to the forum and contribute Love. to each and everything here at Bookmakers Review. We do appreciate it and have a happy and safe Thanksgiving with plenty of winning. See ya. See ya.